Hello, in this episode, we will see an example of how to use API um, to access financial data. And I've taken, um, chosen to do the Yahoo Finance. So um, here are some of the key aspects, but I did prepare the, a Python file, so that will do this. But um, um, the important things that we'll do is um, first, um, import, of course, how to import the API, and then um, how to retrieve data or plot, and then how to actually save back, okay? So this is um, the steps that we will go through. Uh, and um, let's see. So if um, yeah. go to my Google Drive, um, so always uh, I can upload from my local drive and um, Yahoo Finance and here episode 11, I can upload it. Um, I don't have to because I already, uh, I believe um, did upload it here. So here's the Yahoo Finance for my Google Colab. So typically um, what you should do is that you should install um, uh, the API and um, this exclamation mark means that it sort of is equivalent to in Anaconda, sort of like the command window. Do you remember here, this uh, Power Flash prompt and we do go and, and install sort of libraries here. Uh, so in Google Drive, um, doing this equivalent is the exclamation mark and then do the installation. So I'm using here the pip install and Y Finance is the Yahoo Finance provided API. And um, just to remind you, you know, finance um, here, um, if you go to any company, let's say Xbox, uh, and if we go here to historical data, so how do we basically get, get this data is really the question. So, the first thing is to run it and then um, import Y Finance. And I'm gonna just, if Y Finance typing them all is too long, so I will just have YF as a nickname. So whenever I want to call it, I'll just call it a YF. Okay. All right. So how do I get the um, information of a company? Um, you have to know the ticker, so YF dot, so that is the Yahoo Finance API. And under there, there is a function called ticker which it brings an information for a given ticker. SBUX is the Starbucks ticker. So if I do this, um, it will uh, bring in the information for Starbucks. And, um, and then from there, I can just ask what's, uh, what's inside Sbox. So for example, the basic company information is sbox.info. If I type the info, it gives a basic company profile. For example, here, um, I read all the information about Starbucks in Sbox variable and Sbox of info gives me where's the zip code, the email, um, all kinds of things, isn't it? Um, there are a whole bunch of uh, many things that, that it's there. But the real thing that we want, of course, is well, stock prices. How do we get the stock prices? Well, if you want, let's say, um, um, a history. So history gets the historical market data. Um, so if I want it, for example, for the past five days, so then period equal and then five days. So if that gives me five days of past year, of course I could do this like 10 day, okay? And then it will give me 10 days of history, okay? So, um, so that's the idea. Um, one year is, it's, it's based on trading days. So if I want one year, there are 252 trading days and typically to compute a return, you need one more day. So what you can do is that have the Sbox history period 253 trading days, 253D, and then save it in a variable named hist underscore 253D. And if you print that, it will get the whole year. I mean, of course, in the middle is skipping, it's too long, but you can see that there are 253 items of seven um, columns, okay? And if you actually care, um, Yeah, um, uh, 
Let's see. Um, uh, okay, so here we have it. So uh, alternatively, what you can do is that instead of 253 days, you can do one Y, you guessed it, it's one year. So if I save that in the history underscore one Y, the S box of history of that period, it will basically get the same thing. Um, um, yeah, for one year period. Okay. So how do we actually see it? Um, so I'm importing matplotlib PY plot, and again, it's too long, so I'm just gonna nickname it PLT. So um, the plot is basically here, the figure size uh, 69, it will give me the plot of the daily closing price here. And um, there are some other things than prices, like the dividend or stock split. So it's, um, you can find it out by um, the ticker symbol dot actions. And here you can see there are not stock splits, but there were dividends. Um, you can see it here on, on these days. Finally, um, how do I download the stock and export to uh, CSV? So if I, uh, let's say uh, YF download SBOX starting 2021 January 1st to December 31st and save it in a data frame DF1. And then how do I save it to a CSV file? Well, DF1 to CSV that converts the S and, and I'm creating a CSV file here and I'm gonna download it um, on my PC. So this will do it. So it's in the download folder. If you look at it as box one, that CSV file has been downloaded on my computer, which is basically I loaded uh, access to Yahoo Finance through my Python program, but eventually I downloaded it. Of course, I could um, uh, save it on a Google Drive. And again, you have to map your Google Drive. Um, in the earlier episodes, I mentioned it, isn't it? So, and how you map, meaning find your Google Drive location on the Google server is from Google Colab Import Drive and Drive Mount Drive. So this will ask you to get permission. So this is the account and continue and so it's it's mounted okay and then you can download it's in a df2 now let me save it in a different uh, data frame download sbox start here and here so that's the same as before and then to csv okay um to csv the sbox 2.csv and then I want it to be in my Google Drive. And let's see, the Google Drive has a drive, my drive, isn't it? My drive. Um, so, uh, and then Google Colab Notebook. And it's being completed. So let's see. If you go here, Xbox 2 is um, downloaded here, isn't it? As you can see. All right. So this is how you use Yahoo Finance um, access. Other APIs, um, as I um, mentioned in the data overview, other data web pages, data providers also oftentimes give an API and what to do. So this was an example and fairly similar steps follow for other databases as well. Okay. So you should explore your own. Thank you.